All right, in this section, section 9.2.2, we'll be looking at geometric series. We just looked at geometric sequences and we saw that they all look like this. Now we're ready to try to add, the, add up all the terms in a geometric sequence. So in the case of a geometric series, we have a formula for its partial sum and for the full sum. So to theorem 9.2.2, let a n be a geometric sequence with ratio r. Now, if you try to add up all the terms from 1 to n, what you'll get, you'll get a1 minus a n plus 1 over 1 minus the ratio. All right, so the way I'll think of it is the first term, and then you're going up to n. I want the next one, so first missing term, that's the one I'll subtract, over 1 minus ratio. All right, so now that we have um, how, now that we have uh, the partial sums, we can ask about the convergence of the series. So the series converges exactly when the ratio r is in minus 1 to 1, and then the sum of the series is a1 over 1 minus r, so first over 1 minus ratio. All right, so note that the that even when the sum does not start at 1, you can apply the formula. So if um, the sum starts, let's say, at j, so k equals j to n, this is, should be k, I think I correct, oh, k doesn't, yeah, k. Um, so if I take the sum from j to n, I'm going to take the first one. So first minus missing over 1 minus ratio. So that's going to be a j minus a n plus 1 over 1 minus r. And the same thing for the sum. It's going to be first over 1 minus ratio. And so in this case, it will be a j. 1 minus r. So that's why I like this formula because it's not um, restricted by the way the sum is written. Okay, so evaluate the following sum. So I'm going to use these formulas on the following finite sum of geometric series. And so here, um, let's find the ratios. We already found it before, but it's not exactly the same. So let's do it. That's minus 4 for the n plus 1 over minus 4 to the n, I get a ratio of minus 4. All right, so we said this was first minus first missing over 1 minus ratio. And so we get first is n equals 1, that's minus 4 to the 1. Missing is n equals 5, that's the first one I'm not actually listing, and 1 minus ratio. All right, so what do we get? We get minus 4. Um, I actually added this up. It's minus 1,024. And then underneath this 1 plus 4, it's 5. And so I get 1,020 divided by 5, and that's 204. And we can even check here, right? This is not a long sum. I did it on purpose. There are only four terms, so let's check. So we have minus 4 and then minus 4 squared plus minus 4 cubed plus minus 4 to the 4. So that's minus 4 plus 16 minus 64 plus 256. And if I add it up, I get 72 minus 68. 272 minus 68, now that is 204. All right, but you can see this would be helpful if you have a much longer list of terms to add up. All right, let's try again. Let's try with this one. I have the sum from six to two to six. I still need to find the ratio. So a n plus one over a n. I'll get five three n plus one five over three n. Um, I'll get 5, 3, n plus 1, and then I flip the denominator as usual. Um, this cancels with this, and I'm left with 1 on 3. 
All right, so we said first minus missing one minus ratio. And so first would be n equals two, so five over nine. Missing is n equals seven, three to the seven. One minus ratio is one on three. Let me actually write it just in case it's not clear. Since I have n equals two, the first one would be in this case, n equals two. All right, so we get two thirds as the denominator. Um, we can factor five out. I get one over three squared minus one over three sevenths. Uh, I can multiply by three, so I'll get five, one over three minus one over three to the six divided by two. I actually tallied it up and I got 605 over 729. All right, so we used um, part one here. We used part one where there's a finite sum. So these are finite sums. Now, in the next example, we'll be looking at this one where the sum is infinite. Okay, so we'll be using first over one minus ratio because we have infinite sums. There's no next term. But let me just say there's no next term, but this here is making sure that the limit of the terms at the end actually go to zero. All right, determine if the following geometric series converges. If so, find their sum. All right, so here's the first one. The first thing I need to do is I need to find the ratio. Try to check if that's between minus one and one. If it isn't, it's going to diverge. The series diverges and I don't actually need to compute anything. There's no limit. The limit is D and E. All right, so I'm going to look at the ratio. Uh, An plus one is this one. An um, is three to the N, five to the N minus one. And so I get three N plus one, three to the N. Um, oh, sorry. Let me write it the way I usually do, five to the n, so that's the numerator, and then five to the n minus one, three to the n, that's the denominator, and then you cancel these, you get a single three left, you cancel these, you have an extra five here, so you're left with a five underneath. So since r is in minus one to one, the series converges. Let's find its sum. So it converges to S, which is uh, first over one minus R minus ratio. And so here first is N equals one. So that's three to the one over five to the zero. One minus ratio. Ratio we just found was three fifths. And so I get three over two-fifths, and I get 15 halves. All right, so this is very close to the idea of improper integrals. We have an infinite sums, but the terms themselves go, get small really quickly, and so we can actually add them all up using a limit and get a finite number. So we get 15 halves. All right, let's try the second example. I have a sum from n equals one to infinity of minus one to the minus four to the n. So r is a n plus one over a n. That's minus four to the n plus one, minus four to the n. I get minus four. We've seen this a bunch of time. I don't know why I like minus four so much. I guess repetition here is not too bad. So I get minus four. Um, r is not in minus one to one, the series diverges. All right, you don't have to say anything more, but let me just say, just for fun, if I actually spell out what that series means, I'll get to add minus four, and then minus four squared is 16, and then I'll subtract 64, I'll add minus four to the four. I'll 
subtract, well, add minus 4 to the 5, and so on. The terms I'm adding are growing. And so I keep adding things that are big or subtracting things that are big, and they're getting bigger and bigger. There's no chance that the full sum will be finite. Okay, and so that's what's going on here. If r is not between minus 1 and 1, the terms themselves are big, and so you will not get a convergence um, sum. All right, let's do the final one. I think the reason I put that here is because we have n equals 3, just to show you that it doesn't need to have n equals 1 to work. Whatever n is, uh, we use for our first term. All right, so let's find the ratio. It's a n plus 1 over a n. So it's 1 over minus 2, 3 n plus 1. Don't forget to put parentheses if you have something being multiplied like this. Otherwise, you will not get the right answer. And so here I'm going to get 1 over minus 2, 3 n plus 3 times minus 2, 3 n over 1. And so I'm getting 1 over minus 2 cubed. I'm getting minus 1 on 8. That is in minus 1 to 1. And so the series converges. And s, which is the limit as n goes to positive infinity of, um, sorry, I was, I was picturing myself in telescoping series. We actually don't have to take a limit now. We have the formula. So first over 1 minus r. First is going to be when n is equal to 3. So I'm going to get minus 2, 3 times 3. And then 1 minus minus 1 over 8. And so I got, well, if I simplify the bottom, I'll get 9 over 8, and the top is 1 over minus 2 to the 9. And so I got minus 1 over 576. Right, so this is nice because it's so much more simple than what we did before. We don't have to look at limits. We don't have to um, figure out what partial sums is. It's all done for us in the proposition. So let's do the final example. And then we have the proof. I'll put it in a different video. Um, all right, so here um, I don't actually have a formula for an. I kind of have to figure it myself. Um, for sure, first is 3. And then if I look at what the ratio is, I'm multiplying by minus a third. 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 And so all the terms I have are gotten by the previous one by multiplying by minus one third. I can't do anything but assume that keeps going. So I have my ratio of minus a third. R is in minus 1 to 1. And so the series converges. In fact, it's kind of nice here because we, can, we have listed them. We can see how quickly they grow. Well, they shrink actually to 0. And so the terms you're adding shrink really fast. And so the sum actually converges despite the fact that there are infinitely many terms. All right, and so the sum is first over 1 minus r. And so it's 3 over 1 minus minus a third. 3 over th um, 4 thirds, I get 9 fourths. All right, let's stop it here. I'll put the proof in the next video. Thank you.